Hey friends, Deanna here with Homestead and Chill, and today I want to show you exactly how we just set up a drip irrigation system for all of our raised garden beds. So this video is going to take you through everything you need to know from the supplies to the step-by-step -step process to feel confident in setting up a drip irrigation system of your own for your raised beds. In this particular system, we did use drip tape, but I'm also going to go through a few different variations that you can use if you prefer to use regular standard drip irrigation tubing and emitters rather than drip tape. And so if you're not familiar with what drip tape is, it's essentially kind of like a flattened version of regular drip tubing and it has drip emitters pre-installed for you. We chose to use drip tape just because we found that we liked the spacing that this offered. The drip emitters are installed every six inches, um, where some of the other types of drip tubing that you can buy that already has emitters installed for you, I found was more like nine inches or 12 inches or even 24 inches apart, which I think would be really great for a lot of other applications, especially if you're grow growing mostly larger plants like tomatoes or peppers or whatnot. But we also like to grow a lot of root veggies and more closely spaced plants in our garden beds. So I really like like the fact that the drip tape offered us that six inch spacing. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is get a supply line or main water supply to every raised bed. And so before we get going, and I'll actually show you, you know, how to piece together this whole drip portion, I will show you how we ran PVC to all these raised beds. They actually come in right up here, but you can't see it because it's buried in soil, but I'll show you that. Um, you can use PVC, other hard piping, or even the standard half inch black irrigation tubing running up into your beds as well. But I want everyone to keep in mind that we do live in a really mild climate here. So we don't get a lot of freezing conditions and we also don't get very high heat during the summer. So we were able to get away with installing our PVC under just a few inches of gravel on top of the landscape fabric that we have installed in this area. However, in most climates and general best practice for installing irrigation lines is to bury it at least six inches, if not 12 to 18 inches deep um, in a trench under the ground. So I just want you to keep that in mind and look into the best irrigation um, install practices for your climate before you get started. And so depending on where you're at in your garden install process, you have a few different options. It may be easiest to actually trench that pipe and do a little riser to where each raised bed is going to go before you even add your raised beds. However, if you already have raised beds in place, no worries, you can trench in under the side of the bed and have the irrigation come up inside and, and kind of concealed like we have it. Or you can even run pipe right up the outside of your raised bed and then down into the top kind of header area. Um, so this can be applied to either new gardens or existing gardens just the same. All right, so here's a quick peek at the irrigation system in the raised beds before we actually fill them with soil. So as you can see, here is the PVC riser that we created, just covered for now, um, so that soil doesn't get in it when we actually put soil in the beds. And you can see I just poked a hole or cut a hole in the hardware cloth um, to feed that pipe down and under the side of the bed. The hardware cloth is there for gopher proofing. So then we just kind of burrowed under in the gravel. You could obviously do the same in soil. And then this riser is where the rest of the irrigation system will attach to in each bed. The main line that will feed each bed is going to go on the outside and be also kind of buried in the gravel there. And same deal on this side. Okay, so there are all the raised beds and we are doing the first steps of getting the drip irrigation set up to these guys today. So this little area here, we had already had the sprinkler valves um, and two stations that were just stubbed out and capped right here that we had installed for this purpose um, and hadn't used them yet. So we had dug this little area. It's going to go under our steel border here, if you can see that, under here, and then pop up and go over to the beds and then connect from there on down to all the beds. So it's gonna be up to you folks to figure out, you know, exactly where your water supply comes in and how that's hooked up um, to your raised bed irrigation system. But I'll just give you a quick peek at what we have going on over here. So there is a solar powered controller box that operates six different stations with these different valves down here. And they are already reduced, if we can see, they're already reduced down to 40 PSI. And 40 PSI is great for any standard drip irrigation. If you're gonna use just regular drip emitters, anywhere from 20 
to 40 is perfect. We're going to further reduce ours at each bed down to 15 PSI, which I'll show you a little later here, um, only because we're using drip tape and drip tape operates best from eight to 15 PSI. However, because we need to run pipe all the way down to these furthest raised beds down there, we don't want to reduce it down to 15 at the source. We wanna keep that nice pressure flowing all the way down and around so we get even distribution down to the farthest beds and then we'll be doing a pressure reducer in each bed instead. A um, little bit more costly that way having a unit in every bed but if you have something that's a little bit closer or again if you're using just regular drip over that drip tape then you wouldn't need to do that additional step. Okay, and just a quick demonstration in case anyone is not familiar with working with gluing PVC, I'm just going to show you one example of it. So the purple is primer, and the blue here is the glue. And so first you take your male end and just going about an inch back, wipe it around and around. Some folks don't do it a whole lot, some folks do it a lot. Um, if you can see writing, this one doesn't have writing on it, but if you do it until the writing disappears, that's usually a good amount. So do that there, and then I'm gonna repeat the same inside the socket that I'm gonna be putting that piece into. All right, that's nice and primed. And then switch over to the glue. Usually I'll wait for just a second. This is supposed to be about tacky, not dry, but not dripping wet when you put the glue on. It's a fairly warm day today, so it's drying pretty quick. And then the glue, just glob on there a little bit. And same thing, quick little application inside the female part, and then press them together, give it a little bit of a twist, and you can just hold for a few seconds, and that will be a glued piece. All right, here we go. Got that all hooked up, coming over, turning, and connecting in to the first bed. Now we'll just continue that same process. We're setting them on paper towel just so we don't get, you know, dirt and whatnot right in the ends of the pipes while we're working on them. Um, and continue on down. So that's the one. And then this one's heading off that way because it's going to be on a separate system that's going to go down and around the back of these nine, this first system will feed these nine, and then that second system is going to go back and do those um, six, seven, eight down that way. Um, but I wanted to mention real quick, you might have noticed that we have converted to Schedule 80 PVC here in the gravel. So that's the gray PVC, both Schedule 40, the white, and Schedule 80 are the drinking water grade PVC. However, because we are doing this almost, you know, exposed. It's not exposed to the sun. It should be covered in that gravel, but um, Schedule 80 is typically more UV resistant and um, more uh, adaptable or resilient to temperature swings. It won't crack. It won't get brittle. So anything above ground is typically best done in Schedule 80. I also like the fact that it's gray and so it matches with our gravel so that if it does end up kind of showing a little bit, we're going to backfill that a bit, but you know, it might pop up here and there. I'm going to be a little bit visible. It'll be less visible than the white pipe, um, but it is a little bit more costly. And so I would only recommend doing the Schedule 80 if you need it for that similar type of application.
Okay, so here are all the different supplies that you need to create the same type of system that we have. And pretty much everything that we got here, we got from Drip Depot. So I'll make sure to add links to everything here in the caption below. And also we did sign up as affiliates for Drip Depot. So if you shop through our links, we do get a small commission, which we greatly appreciate. So thank you so much in advance. Um, so starting at the very beginning of the system, when we come in from the type of headers that we created, as you saw, these come into our raised beds under the side and up and then connect to all the drip components thereafter. We, because again, we use these optional pressure reducers to, for drip tape to get it down to that 15 PSI, we have a male threaded part here that comes on to this guy. And then this is where we then convert to drip. So this piece is a really integral piece, but you may have to use something slightly different depending on what your connection is like at your initial water supply. So again, because we have this piece here, we have you know a male part here and a male part here, um, but there are versions of this where if you just needed to connect straight to your PVC, you could get this with a female end, um, screw that onto there, and then your black irrigation tubing, this stuff, connects onto this part. Um, so with this piece in mind, this is your, what you're going to connect to your black irrigation tubing. The black irrigation tubing is what you're going to create your main header along the top of the raised bed with that the drip lines are then going to connect onto. With that, we like these Permalox style um, connectors that you actually unscrew and loosen, shove your tubing on, and then screw it back on. And with that, you can actually unscrew it and take parts apart, do repairs, things like that. It's not a permanent installation, but it is leak proof, which we really like. Compared to, there are other fittings that you just shove this guy into once, it's a compression fitting, and then you can't take it back out. So then if you need to make any changes in the future, you end up having to cut things, then things are too short and it kind of gets a little hairy thereafter. Um, so we like this permalock style for this and it's the same for any elbows you need. So this is our elbow for the corner um, that brings it up from the header and across the top of the bed. So same style with the attachments. And one extra thing that this has, besides just converting from PVC to drip here, is it has a shutoff valve, which I really, really like because then we can have utmost control over every raised bed. Not only can we shut off individual beds if needed for whatever reason, repairs, or we just don't have something growing in the bed at that time, but we can also even tailor it back. If we wanted to do like a half reduced flow or something to that bed, then we can do that there as well. So just really handy to have that valve and that individual control in every bed. Um, some other things are, if you're working with PVC, these are pipe glue and pipe primer. Purple is usually the primer, and the blue is glue, and a nice set of pipe cutters is really helpful. Otherwise, if you're just working with the um, drip tubing components, then just a regular pair of nice you know, heavy-duty scissors is going to be enough to cut all of this stuff. Um, and then we have this figure eight clamp is where you actually end your... Um, your half inch solid drip tubing and I'll show you that. These little guys are what connect to, and again I'll demonstrate all of this, what connect into here and then the drip tape attaches to, which I'll show you next. But to mention, there's a few different variations of this as well. So this one is made for drip tape, it's 5 eighths inch and again just kind of um, screws on over it. A hole punch is handy for punching the holes in your drip tubing um, that then you can plug in your these attachments or other drip emitters. These caps are the ends, how you end the line for your drip tape. And again, I'll demonstrate that. And then here's the drip tape itself. So again, it's kind of a flat tape tube and the drip emitters are every six inches with these little purple dots. And this one is a really heavy duty one. So not all drip tape is created equal. This one is 15 mils. And that is a thickness that's gonna last for up to 10 years. It's a really commercial grade. Drip tape gets kind of a bad rap where sometimes it's thought of as more disposable or doesn't last as long because in big ag, they kind of use it that way. Um, but if you buy the really, really thick, high quality stuff, this should last you a very long time. Um, and then each emitter in the ones that we chose are 0.25 or a quarter of a gallon per hour is what these put out. And then obviously a measuring tape for taking your measurements. Um, and then we also use nice heavy duty landscape staples to keep everything down in place in the soil. 
All right, so this is what the header looks like before it is assembled. We went ahead and already measured and cut um, the length of the top of the header, which is just enough to fit inside the top of the raised garden bed from corner to corner on the inside, taking into account the little four by fours we have in our raised beds too that kind of cut into the distance. And then we have our little corner connector here that we're going to attach to this piece of the half inch tubing. And then this is already in each raised bed. So you'll see that in a moment here. So we're just gonna from here up um, and then go ahead and plug it into the raised bed. So let me show you how we're going to put this all together. So first we're going to start by connecting this corner piece to the two components of the main header. So with these types of fittings you want to go ahead and unscrew them all the way back so most of the barb is exposed as possible. And then it just takes a little, little muscle to shove them in there together. All right, and then you want to push it so it's in as far as possible, and then you actually screw this back down over it until it's nice and tight. All right, so that one's really tight, and I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. Okay, now that those are attached, I'm going to add this little figure eight to end the very end of the drip line. So to do that, you just slide this guy on, and fold it back over itself by a couple inches and push it back into that figure eight like that and then kind of pull it back and that effectively ends in caps line so it won't leak out of that. So at this point, I suggest if you're making your first header, taking this actually over to your raised bed and figuring out exactly where you want to put each of these guys so that they're evenly spaced between your bed. You can put drip tape anywhere as close to six inches up to 12 inches apart. Ours are all about nine inches apart. Um, we already made a bunch of these though, so we already know exactly where we need to mark and punch holes in these ones. But I suggest just taking your first one over to your raised bed and actually checking it out um, in person. So now at each mark that I made um, where one of these drip tape adapters is going to attach, I'm going to take my hole punch here and I want the hole to be on the side where it's going to make the uh, um, drip tape lay flat going kind of in line with this leader part here. So I'm just going to use this guy, a little awkward here on camera, but get it lined up with my mark, punched a hole, you can see the hole there. And then all you do is take one of these adapters and press and it's attached. So we're just gonna repeat that same process down the line for the three others. All right, so here are our four lines of drip tape that we're gonna attach to the header next. They look a little crazy because they're laying on their sides right now, but we went ahead and measured and cut them to be from the distance of the top of the raised bed actually where their point of connection will be down to the very end of the raised bed where the cap will be so that they fill it out really nicely. And then we're going to connect the drip tape to these um, connectors kind of the same way that we did the corner piece. So I want to start by making sure that this guy is all the way unthreaded and then with the drip tape you just kind of pop it open. Sometimes I'll just stick my finger in there and it makes a nice little hole and then I can push it onto this barb, make sure it's nice and all the way up and then just unscrew that back, or screw it back down, I guess I should say, to tighten in around the piece of tape. And then it's connected. We're gonna repeat the same process all the way down the line for the other three. Okay, so now how we would actually end each line of drip tape. So you take your little cap, there are different versions of caps by the way, but this is just what we chose to use. You actually insert it through the skinnier end, so there's a smaller opening on this end and then a wider opening on this end. Push it through a bit and then you take the tape and just fold it back over itself a couple times. That creates a nice kink and then you can tuck and pull that back into the whole clip, if I can do this here. There we go. Oops. Don't mind my dirty fingernails. We've been working in the garden beds a lot. 
There, now that's all capped. All right, all connected. Let's go get this put in the raised bed. So it's just laying here now, waiting for us to get it all connected. And I thought I would mention now too, that before we installed any of these components, like the pressure reducer and the drip components, we flushed our whole PVC system. You can see it kind of popping in here, but we ran water through it to make sure that we flushed out any dirt or debris or anything that got into the pipes during the construction process. And that's also why we assembled these headers up on our patio, rather than here in the dirt in the soil. If you need to make one in your bed, just to again kind of figure out your right spacing and your measurements and stuff just be sure to cover the ends or make sure you don't get debris into your system because it can easily clog in drip irrigation systems so with that i had covered this little connection here with wax paper um, so no soil would get in there so i'm going to go ahead and remove this and then i can connect the header right to that valve there Once the header is pinned in place, we just come down to the end of the line, get it pulled taut, and use a landscape staple, pin those in place as well. All right, so it's all installed. This is the one we just did. Give you a little closer look. I went ahead and turned this valve on, and then Aaron's going to fire up the system for us. You can hear it kicking on. Push an air out of the pipe first, and then it'll start dripping and bubbling away. Here we go. All right, and then this system is going to be incredibly efficient and effective at keeping the soil nice and evenly moist just below the soil surface and deep into the bed. However, I should mention if you're doing any direct sowing, so that's sowing seeds right in the garden beds like you would with carrots or radishes or turnips and things like that, um, that you will likely want to provide some additional overhead watering and hand watering to keep the very top of the soil moist just during those early stages of seed germination and while the seedlings are getting developed. I'm coming over here because we sowed a bunch of turnips that are just starting to pop out. So unless they're right next to one of these drip emitters, the top of the soil can get just a little bit dry in between the lines. And that's kind of the same with any type of irrigation system though. So we'll do a few weeks of that additional hand watering. Then afterwards, this system is going to totally take care of all of our irrigation needs for us. And let's go take a look now at a couple different variations that you can use for setting up drip to your raised beds besides using drip tape. All right, in this area of our garden, there are a few existing raised garden beds that have a similar but slightly different drip irrigation system. So I thought I would show you what's going on here. You can see it easiest in this one that's empty up front here. But they just had installed a PVC riser, really similar to what we did in ours. It's just kind of more in the middle of the bed here. And then just went straight to the half inch irrigation tubing. So there's probably some type of glue coupler in here. I recommend using um, a threaded coupler for something like this so that again, you can make easy adjustments and repairs later if needed rather than having that part glued. Um, but it just turns into drip irrigation, tubing, the solid stuff, and then loops all around the perimeter of the bed, which actually works pretty well for a more narrow raised bed like this and then they installed these little flag emitters which I like um, because you can actually dial those up or down and I think there's a few more traditional drip emitters in here as well like this um, or you could even connect if you needed to get stuff to the middle of the bed differently use the micro tubing this quarter inch micro tubing and then put something like there's a little irrigation box but something like this little um, bubbler sprinkler you know with the irrigation tubing connected to that um, and you just use a hole punch and a little barb kind of the same way that we punched holes in here to connect all of those different types of adapters um, so you can do something like this that's even more straightforward than the system that we used and then let me show you one other thing 
Okay, and now if you're not feeling like messing with PVC or hard piping at all, and especially if you only have a handful of raised beds, you could hook up a system, oh hi lizard, a system like this. So this is a hose bib drip irrigation system, super easy to assemble. We just have a timer and um, some fittings here that then convert to drip. So this drip line goes and feeds, you know, everything, all these shrubs that are in this hedge here, this border. However, you can easily run, and I've seen a lot of folks do it, the half inch drip tubing right over to the edge of a raised bed, throw in a little T or an adapter, or like a 90, have it come up into the bed. I'm pointing to the barrels because we might actually do that for these barrels rather than connecting them to our PVC system. But yeah, you can use the, the black tubing, run it up and into the side of the beds or even under the edge of the beds and operate an entire system on the half inch tubing alone straight from a nearby hose bib. So I do have an article all about setting up this type of system and a video, I mean. Um, so I'll add a link in the caption so it'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of doing that system if that sounds more your style. Okay, well, now that we got all the details out of the way, the one final note I do want to mention is for those folks that live in cold climates with freezing conditions over the winter. As it is with best practice for all types of irrigation systems, you do want to thoroughly drain your system before freezing conditions arrive. And to even better extend the life of these types of systems and prevent anything from breaking if there's any water left over in any of the parts, especially all the valves and whatnot, a great way to really protect it is to just disconnect it and put it somewhere that is protected over the winter and bring it back out in spring and I know that sounds like a little bit of a pain however especially if you have an easy attach um, connector or a threaded connector here at the corner of the bed you could just lift up this whole manifold hang a few of them in the garage or something like that especially if you're only dealing with a few raised beds it's definitely worth protecting your investment um, but otherwise I think we've covered everything today uh, so feel free to ask any questions in the comments below we greatly appreciate you tuning in if you found this information to be valuable please give it a thumbs up um, subscribe and follow along on our website site homesteadandchill.com where we share even more gardening information and um, including a written blog article that will go along with this video that outlines the step-by-step -step process with photos and links to all of the parts and things like that if you prefer to follow along there but otherwise we'll see you next time thanks for watching